Greetings, it's Shelly here. I wanted to talk today about my 2016 uh, reading challenge. For 2016, I wanted to read 200 books, which is a lot. Last year in 2015, I read 136, 37 books with a pretty big gap where uh, five months out of the year, I just wasn't reading. Within the 200 books, 50 are allowed to be graphic novels or manga. I kind of put a limit on that because last year, a lot of the books that I read um, I think it was over 50 ended up being um, graphic graphic novels or manga. I really wanted to make sure that I got through a lot of the books on my shelf that I hadn't read. Um, so I kind of put that limitation on myself until I get to 200 and then I'm allowed to read um, whatever it is that strikes my fancy. To keep myself on track, I have developed a couple of methods to keep myself focused on my goal. Doing the math for 200 books, I have to read the minimum um, 17 a month and four of those are allowed to be graphic novels or manga. And so far I've been doing really good. I've, I have not read below my 17 minimum um, a month. I know I need to kind of, I want to kind of do a recap of everything that I've read so far for the year, but um, I'll make separate videos kind of summarizing what I read for each month, um, just like if I had filmed them during those months when I didn't. <laughs> But on to how I keep track of my books that I'm reading. The first method is on Goodreads. I actually have a separate list of book or tag of books that I, yeah, a tag that I put on the books for uh, read in 2016. So if I go back and reread any of the books that I read this year, um, I can still keep track of, you know, that it was read in 2016. Goodreads has a way you can kind of document when you've reread a book but it kind of takes it out of your your previous year's reading challenges of, as, like, as far as the count of books that you read for that year, which is unfortunate, unless if they fixed it, because I know in the past that it, it, my numbers would go down. Say for instance when I reread Harry Potter, my number for like 2012 dropped because I reread them again the next year in 2013. That was kind of unfortunate, and I don't know if maybe that's been fixed or not. I figured that this was a good way for myself to kind of go back and, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, these are all the books that I had read that year. The second way that I keep track is with a reading journal. It has Boba Fett on it. I started working on this um, in December uh, of 2015, and I got really excited and just like, 200, yeah, I can do 200. So I went and looked up all these different reading challenge lists, ones that like Pop Sugar and I think it was like the American Librarians Association, um, just a whole bunch of different lists that are available on Pinterest to kind of come up with topics and I tried to assign a theme to a bunch of books. They all had to be books I have not read before because like I said, I'm trying to avoid the reread, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I found, I think it was just, I think I, no, it was 200 themes and I wrote them all out and they're dealing with page counts if they're a specific genre quirky things like if they have uh, colors or or elements or if uh, the author fits within a particular like uh, is it a comedian is an actor is is a black author is a female author uh, all different kind types of criteria you know if main characters were reflective of different diversity or just trying to encourage myself to read more diverse authors and trying to get through all of the books or as many books as possible on my shelf that I just haven't read before. As I go through and read them, um, I will we'll put the date that I read it. Um, so for um, the very first book that I read for the year, um, the theme of it was a book at least 100 years older than you, which I picked was uh, 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northrup. And I finished it in the wee hours of the morning on January 2nd. So I got that there. As I've gone through, because, you know, we're in May now. Um, so I was trying during April to go through my pages, because this goes along multiple pages. I think I have, I have no idea, so many pages that are written um, with a bunch of different themes on it that I noticed that there were books on some pages. I, I hadn't read any books on that page. So I tried to hit some of those, so I've had at least one book read on every single page. Then I started feeling like, oh, now you're really kind of constricting the kind of books that you are, like there are books that I wanna read that I'm not able to because it's not on this list, even though I purchased them after I had made this list. You know, it was kind of unfortunate, but I did have the foresight to put on um, two pages that are full of free reads. 
So if there was something that came up that wasn't on this list that I was like, oh, I have got to read it, um, which, you know, some more will probably be, you know, here's my last page of free reads. I've read a lot of free reads. Um, you know, some more will be probably a couple of the Pulitzer winning books um, for the for the year. Um, I definitely want to get those read, even though I have all these other ones to read too, um, that just because they're not, they're not fitting in that criteria right now. But I started to feel kind of towards the end of last month in April, really really restricted trying to hunt down hunt through and I was getting kind of overwhelmed just looking at my shelves and saying hmm, like trying to just pick out among the spines like what is the thing that's interesting to me and I was afraid that I was going to miss something I really needed to clear off of my off of my reading challenge list because a lot of these have books that I selected for are ones that have been on my shelf and have been unread for a very long time like a couple of them for at least three years, maybe a little bit longer. That's when I came up with solution two. Make a little drawing tin. So this is like a little lunchbox that I got in the dollar aisle at Target with Kylo Ren on it. And inside of it, um, I put a bunch of slips of paper that have all of the book titles um, from my 2016 reading challenge on it. And as soon as I made this and I drew my first one, it was Fragments by Dan Wells, which is the second book in the Particles trilogy. Um, that I have had sitting on my shelf since it came out in hardback <laughs> and I would always look at it every time I would rearrange my shelves I would look at that book and think oh, I really want to read it I really want to get back into it I was really happy that that was my first draw so everything starting from the beginning of May has will these books will be drawn from here because I have so many series that I haven't read that are just sitting on my shelves I only put on the first in the series, so it would force me to kind of go through and read the rest of the series. But if I wasn't really feeling the series, after the first maybe couple of books, or even the first book, you know, could completely just turn me off of the series, it makes it, it makes it just so much easier for me to kind of go ahead and clear those off of my shelves if I'm not, if I don't like it. That's kind of everything with the 10. Another part of my reading journal is um, kind of a recap of what I read for each month. I know it seems kind of redundant, like you have that list in the front of the book that has like everything with a theme for the reading challenge, why would you write it out again? Most of us who are into um, reading are like obsessive list makers, I guess, especially if we collect our own libraries. <laughs> so it was just kind of satisfying to have a way to write down all the books that I read and then draw a line for when I met my goal and um, for my first for January and February, the goal is actually kind of skewed because for January I said 18 and then for February I said 16 because February has less days out of any other month in the year. Um, but then I redid my math on what I needed to do every month at the minimum to reach my goal by the end of the year and I was like, no, 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 17, 17 is, it's actually like 16 point whatever, but 17 is good. So I'm a few books over that goal by the end of the year, which is completely doable at this point, especially since uh, graphic novels are involved in that number. So far, I just finished, you know, it's what, May 6th is when I'm filming this right now. Um, so I just finished reading Throne of Glass, finally. Um, really excited to see that that came out of the, the thing. So I've actually read three books so far, um, and I'm about to start this evening on the next book in that series, which is Crown of Midnight, I believe it is. This has been like really good because both of the series that got picked out of my um, my little lunchbox when I was trying to draw it for the first time were both series that I've had on my shelves that I've been really excited to read or finish in the case of the Particles, um, the rest of the Particles trilogy. Um, so it was, it was really... I, I like this idea and I hope that I can continue with it. There are other parts of my reading challenge um, this year that are not really documented in the book but I'm trying to be conscientious of it because I want to make sure that I read more diverse books. I was really interested starting I think late 2014 or early 2015 when the We Need More Diverse Books campaign um, really blew up on Tumblr. Part of being a con what I'm calling a conscientious reader is to read more diverse books and the thing that I picked is I want at the minimum every month to read two black authors. I read a lot of articles from authors who um, who are black and we're talking about you know when they're at these um, conventions for the book the book related conventions everything within the publishing world related conventions they talk about how they feel so marginalized in the community that um, I wanted to make sure that that I read their voice because they have a perspective to offer that is completely different from mine. I think it's incredibly important to to read 
their works, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, just to kind of broaden the number of perspectives and the types of perspectives um, that I get to interact with through literature, which is incredibly important. And it's, just, it's a really great time to be more conscientious about that type of thing, when ideally we wouldn't be. It would be just a great story is a great story is a great story. It doesn't matter that the cast of characters is um, diverse. It doesn't matter that the authors are diverse, that the models or the artwork reflects diversity, but it I, I, ideally we would be in that case. But it's also really important to be conscientious to go looking for that, um, especially um, right now because there are so many things that are changing in um, American culture um, and just with our society in, in general, everyone's trying to become more understanding. They're trying to understand uh, like the trans experience and the trans struggle. Uh, they're trying to understand Black Lives Matter. They're trying to understand all of these different groups, understand, you know, the perspective of Muslims in the country, you know, like we're, 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 we're at this point where a lot of us are making a greater effort to try to understand their perspectives, their struggles, and um, participate in the dialogue that they're starting. And literature is a great way to, to participate in that dialogue, I think. That was really rambly. <laughs> <laughs> Another part of the 2016 challenge, what kind of crept up late, I wasn't planning on it because it didn't really exist. Um, in the middle of January, Emma Watson announced that she wanted to do a feminist book club, which is called Our Shared Shelf. And they do have a group uh, on um, on Goodreads about it. If you haven't joined already, please, you know, check it out. Um, there have been a number of good um, books that she's selected and um, tons of recommendations and tons of, you know, videos and articles that everyone's been sharing to kind of understand feminism, intersectional intersectionality, and you know, all, all sorts of relevant topics to just the human experience. So I tacked that on too, and I've put them in as my free reads as well, which, eh, yeah. And there has only been one book um, that has been selected for the club that I have not liked. And um, I'll probably make a whole different video to kind of talk about that. And I'm sure when I do a recap for the month that I read it, I'll mention that as well. Um, but overall, I've really enjoyed um, getting to read these books. I've learned a lot of things. I've learned a lot of terminology. Um, but I have tons of books that have not been read that um, are not on my challenge list. And I have a few more free read spots that are available. I'm probably going to double up on a few of those because let's be completely real, no one likes to be stuck with a list. So what I'm slowly going through right now because it's not complete is I have a second <laughs> Kylo Ren related thing. It's a popcorn tin that I got. Um, and it has more <laughs> more of these in here so um if i feel like oh i don't want to read anything from my challenge list i just want to read something you know i'm going to train myself to pull something from this bucket um because everything on my shelf is an amazing read and it's time to start reading some of these things and i feel like this is kind of a better way to kind of corral myself um to to stay focused on the task at hand you probably want to know it's may 6 2016 how far are you exactly in this 200 book by 200 books by the end of the year challenge? I am sitting right now at 83. I've read 83 books in 2016 so far. Um, and I have kept steady with my, um, I just call it comics just to simplify it. My graphic novel, manga, um, headcount. They really help break up the bigger books that I read, like when I read War and Peace and when I read my Alan Turing biography. Um, they really kind of helped me have a reading break so I stayed engaged in the big thicker piece of material that I was trying to get through. I've told myself because I've been doing really well the last couple months that if for May I am able to get to being at a total of 100 for the year, which would be 50% of my goal, holy cow, that in June I am allowed to reread Harry Potter, I am allowed to read the entirety of The Walking Dead graphic novels, um, and if there's anything else that's, that just strikes me that I want to read, I'm allowed to pick it up off the shelf and read it. I don't have to be holding to the lists. I, th I think I can get there. I think I can do it. I don't know. Um, we'll see because there are a bunch of really big books in here. 
we're gonna try. I'm sure people would find it like really daunting, but it actually really excites me because it sounds like a big goal. Like, oh, well, she's just flying through stuff and she's not reading every every page, every word on every page. And but you don't have to do that. You don't have to read every page. You don't have to read every word of every page of every book. Um, but I am. I am. I don't know. Um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't pick a or I wouldn't read a book or have any of them on my shelves that um that I wasn't interested in reading cover to cover. Um, that's just not how I operate. Um, that's everything about my 2016 reading challenge. Um, if any of you had a reading challenge that you set for this year, um, what kind of, what number was your goal or are you following a specific list? Uh, how did you find your information? Um, whatever your, how do you find the, the challenge that you want to, um, follow whenever, if you do a challenge? I'll see you soon.